got my doc in. <laughs> We're going to talk about the War of 1812 today. Sorry that none of my videos are good quality. But I hope you guys are all staying positive and doing well. And I hope these videos help a little bit. Some kids say they do. So I'll keep making a few every week. Um, that subdivision over there cut down a bunch of trees. I'm not that happy about that. Uh, oh well. But uh, guys, all right, so here we go. All right, let's see here. Okay. So we're going to talk about the War of 1812 here. Let's uh, see if we can keep the cat out of the way. And then we'll get a good screenshot of the paper here. Cat's trying to get credit. <laughs> There's a woodpecker behind me. All right. There's a good screenshot right there of the War of 1812. We're just going to talk about causes and results. Remember, when we, when we talk about wars in AP US history... Um, when we talk about wars, the fact of the matter is, uh, you don't need to know what general won what battle or anything like that. Um, that's not important. What is important is knowing, like, causes, results, how maybe it changed society or impacted a certain social demographic, like World War II, Rosie the Riveter... Uh, maybe the Zoot Suit Riots, things like that for something like World War II. We had just talked about that before. Um, we went on this weird break here. But so guys, causes of uh, World War, excuse me, causes of the War of 1812. Guys, after the American Revolution, America really wasn't treated as an independent nation by um, Europe, by the France... Uh, Britain, the European powers, and both Britain and France have been stopping our boats for many years, but right under the lead-up of the War of 1812, especially Britain had been stopping our boats. Any boats that might be headed for France, they stop, they steal the cargo, because Britain and France are at war, the Napoleonic Wars. Um, and so they steal the cargo, and it's upsetting America. Lots of goods are being stolen. It's hurting our economy. Moreover, to make matters even worse, when Britain stops our boats, they impress, I-M-P-R-E-S-S-M-E-N-T, impressment, they impress people off our boats. So impressment is where they stop our boats and they force people off our American boats and essentially... Um, make them serve in the Royal Navy. And they do this to thousands of people. Now, some of these people that they're forcing off the boats literally had been, uh, you know, uh, fleeing Britain to avoid the Napoleonic Wars, they had skipped off British boats because they didn't want to fight. But many of the people, nonetheless, were... Uh, American citizens and weren't fleeing or skipping the, the Royal Navy. And so Britain is essentially kidnapping thousands of people, some technically British citizens, but many American citizens off American boats. And as you can tell, that would obviously be very, very upsetting and controversial um, back then, especially even today if something like that was going on. Well, you can see a swan way over there. Um, can see this there's, there's two swan nests that I know of in this lake there's one uh, and then there is another swan nest way over there somewhere you can't see it because it's kind of tucked around the cove kind of like a little cove but there's another swan nest over there um, but another cause so you have, you have Britain stealing cargo and then impressment for two causes another cause of the War of 1812 is that Britain is giving guns to Native Americans. Now, hit pause a second. Now, these Native Americans are thinking, we're fighting for our very existence, we're fighting for our life, we're fighting for, you know, our society, for our way of life, we're fighting for our, our very survival. And that, that's true. However, both sides, both sides were attacking villages and wiping out everyone in the village, men, women, children, babies, elderly. 
And so the fact of the matter is the typical American doesn't see it that way. The typical American sees, well, the Native Americans are wiping out our villages and they kind of ignore the fact that uh, we're doing it too. And so when Britain is trading guns to Native Americans out west, and by out west, I mean through via Canada through places like Michigan and then those guns come through Michigan and spread into Ohio and Indiana and Kentucky and Illinois and so a lot of Americans see Britain as having blood on their hands that they're that they're arming the Native American resistance that it's British guns and British bullets killing American villages and so this is upsetting and the, the biggest support for the war comes from people down south and people out west and remember out west i'm talking ohio indiana illinois um it's the people in the northeast who tend to be the most opposed to the war because they want to trade with britain that's where the industry is and they want to they want to be on good terms with britain um, a lot of Americans had talked about liberating Canada. Now, Canada is controlled by Britain back then, and it's not all that clear. Uh, m most Canadians do not want to be, quote, free of Britain. Most Canadians do not want to be free of Britain at this time. Some do, but, but the evidence suggests most don't. But the fact of the matter is, uh, Americans are talking about, quote, liberating Canada. Liberating Canada. Um, and this is like some big uh, uh, thing. We need to get rid of the monarchy completely from our soil of our continent. And that uh, we know best. My The city I live in is actually named after a Canadian who tried to rise up and throw off the monarchy. Captain Norton. Uh, you know, uh, so Americans at this time are, are obsessed with, you know, being a republic. Getting rid of, um, getting rid of the... The whole monarchy and all of this um, and uh, so uh, and last but not least there, there's things like honor uh, people talk about our honor has been besmirched and defiled by the British uh, in a variety of incidents the most famous one is the Chesapeake leopard affair the British boat leopard stops the Chesapeake the American boat and uh, it's an American uh, military boat. And the fact of the matter is that the British board and they take four people off the boat, very humiliating. And they hang one of the people for being a deserter. And this just outrages America. You're stopping our boats and now you're hanging people off our boats. Um, and so we need to protect our honor. The fact of the matter is we, we sent a list of demands to Britain. And... Uh, uh, basically saying we're going to go to war with you unless you give in and Britain did give in to most not all the demands but uh, it took too long to get the message across the ocean the reply and then the reply back across the ocean we actually invade Canada before we get the response and then the war is on uh, but look at results of the war here now we're going to look a little bit at results so um, guys looking at results of the war Neither side gained or lost land. Uh, so no land is gained, no land is lost on our side or the British Canadian side. Native American resistance in parts of the West, and by West I mean like Kentucky, Indiana, a lot of the Native American resistance in that kind of area, Ohio, is crushed and isn't ever significant in parts of the West ever again. Um, because uh, you, you could argue Britain and America fought to a draw. Who's the big loser? The Native Americans who are devastated by this war. Um, a lot of people, there's this new surgence of national pride. People call the War of 1812 the second war for independence. You know, Britain burnt down our capital. Hey, they're going to try to take us over again. Uh, but uh, we didn't let them get away with it. And uh, so you, you kind of got that. Um, and uh, Andrew Jackson, one of the most controversial presidents of all times, becomes a national hero with the Battle of New Orleans, which technically takes place in January 1815 when the war ends in December 1814. Once again, you have slow communication back then. The war is technically over. A peace treaty has been signed at Ghent over in Europe. But by the time the, fi the news finally hits a place like New Orleans... 
Andrew Jackson has already won a major battle <laughs> in Louisiana. Now he's this national figure. And for better or for worse, Andrew Jackson's going to use this popularity to launch a very successful political career that sees him run in the 1824 election, which he has a plurality, meaning not a majority, but more votes than anyone else in 1824, but still loses. But then he wins 1828 and his re-election in 1832 by landslides. And I'm saying, listen very carefully, I'm saying Andrew Jackson was a consequential president. Consequential doesn't say mean good or bad. It just means that it changed history. There was a consequence to it. And the fact of the matter, oh, you got some ducks right there. And uh, the fact of the matter is, um, Andrew Jackson, you're talking 1831 Indian Removal Act, reducing the national debt down to nothing, at least temporarily. Um, moreover, you're looking at some of these other things, like his war with the, the Second National Bank, um, and re vetoing the, the, the renewal of the Second National Bank. Um, look at some of the other policies. Um, and uh, the species circular, you have to buy land with gold or silver, hard currency, not paper currency, not loans. Um, and uh, put the cat here. Still, still here, trying to get pet in. And uh, so Andrew Jackson, you know, his, his presidency, uh, you know, vetoing the Maysville Road. You know, hey, it's not the national government's prerogative to go ahead and be funding um roads and canals and bridges and things like that in in individual states even if that connects into other states to make some kind of a you know a trade network um andrew jackson uh, is a consequential president in the war of 1812 is what catapults him to fame all right kids stay positive and have a good day and uh i got my doc in and uh, <laughs> got my old year-round dock on that side. But uh, all right, kids. So uh, have a good day and uh, stay out of trouble. Be positive. Take care, kids.